well friends uh, uh, today's uh, my topic is uh, security this is a very uh, introductory session for this uh, uh, network security part so as part of this uh, i'll be discussing about uh, to start with uh, the introduction and then uh, what is the difference between symmetric and asymmetric key algorithms and if time permits i'll be giving certain uh, light about what is authentication and how digital uh, signature is uh, basically playing a vital role in the world of network security in the end uh, i'll be looking at the different uh, case studies as a part of uh, applications as all of us know that uh, in the world of this communication we are having uh, two communication partners to, to communicate with each other so the call is required to be established the establishment of the call will taken place by our uh, connection oriented part by tcp and connection less part by udp and in the world of network security the sender generally we are using the word alice and the receiver we are calling the word bob so these two characters uh, are very popular characters so that's why whenever i now onwards say alice it is a sender receiver mean bob that you need to remember it so these two people would like to communicate uh, so smoothly in between then we can say the unauthorized person who is a intruder then i am giving his character name as a trudy he is like a villain in our movies well now as you know when you say about the security cia triad is very important c stand for confidentiality i stand for uh, integrity a is availability all of us do know about uh, confidentiality confidentiality mean whatever uh, sender is sending to the receiver only these two people are supposed to understand that's why the whole encryption and decryption concept will taken care by in this particular uh, principle and whatever message we are transmitting we have to ensure that uh, the message originality is required to be preserved that we are calling integrity of the message of course we need to ensure that it will be accessible and available to all the users by keeping in view of uh, this cia our goal here is between these two people the communication has to take place mean the very first part what we have to have here is authentication sender has to authenticate that the receiver is the right person receiver has to authenticate that the sender is the right person so this authentication is required to be performed then the question of a key distribution will come here so in this we are going to discuss as a part of this uh, today session symmetric key and asymmetric key part then if the symmetric key same key will be there and how do you ensure that authorized authenticated people only receiving the key and over and above that we are encrypting the message with that key and in the end we are having the message integrity with the help of our digital signatures so at which stage what type of algorithm we are going to use that is our general overview of our network security so in this particular one the whole part is the algorithm based discussion we are having this so can you remember these four entities between these two alice and bob how we are going to have for that we are discussing this today's evening session for that uh, the basic terminology is uh, we need to understand what is the plain text the plain text is the message which we are going to transmit and uh, as it is uh, without encrypting if you transmit anybody can able to read this so for that purpose we need to apply some sort of a encrypted algorithm to make that uh, it is a coded message only authorized person can able to understand that that we are calling it a cryptic text we can as well call it a cryptic text or cipher text for that we are doing encryption and decryption like that the discussion going on and here we are having this word what we are calling it a cryptology cryptology is nothing but a cryptography plus a crypt analysis that we are calling it so how this uh, involved that is our in between this alice and bob let us see now So this is a scenario which I have told now. All of these is a study of different different scripts. This is the art of developing the scripts. And the other side, how we are going to analyze them. In between this, we are going to have it. So this is a sender. There is a receiver, and it will be then this attacker in the form of intruder that is there. And E is a encryption with the help of key, and D is a decryption with the help of same key. Then encryption and decryption are required to be inverse to each other. Yeah. so as all of us know that uh, because of this intruders only the whole uh, scenario has become much more interesting one and that intruder simply we call it a bad guy 
what is this bad guy is doing now so he can do a lot and he can intercept the messages that we are calling eos dropping and this is a only passive attack his role is not much is there simply he tampering the message sometimes his role will become much more active then we are calling a active then the entire message he will be taking out and simply changing it so over and above that uh, the network security technology like uh, spoofing the message that we are calling a uh, impersonation hard a entire session can as well be hijacked here so by keeping in of this bad guy then we are having the, all these algorithms so in between the bad guy as well uh, go for uh, something called we are calling dvs so making uh, the person not to attend our uh, desired work so preventing the services what is being used so he, that is all we are calling denial of service yeah so let us start with the uh, with small uh, what is meant by plain test and the cipher test yeah so now let let us look at now this part this is the one which i am calling it a cipher test how this bad guy is going to find out what could be the plain test so in this particular one you can able to see that uh, this particular character is repeated here so it means he is trying to find out with a single character what could be the next character so this single character we are having now only here l and d in our english sentence the single letter characters we can say now something like we are having here uh, we can call like the uh, a person so it means a is a single letter character and i am delivering a lecture i is a another single letter so that means there is a chance that this can become either a or i and as well this can become a, could be a could be i then in this particular scenario what happened now if i fix this one as a particular character like a then definitely another character could be i then with the second character i trying to find out what will be the another scenario then again here we are having now i so that way in the sentence framing we cannot be able to have a sentence meaningful sentence like a i some entity which we have to find out and i generally sentence formation we can have you and i will have a cup of tea you and i will go to a movie like that here it should be three letter character so that indicates that here the chances of l becoming a is a very less then we are dropping this then at the time when you go for l d p d e r b then we do understand that uh, from this the chances of l is e a i then definitely a will be now what d that means wherever here i am having here a and we are having here the a then i am trying to find out what is the next character here so this type of thing what we are calling it here yeah, analyzing the test so the bad guy can able to find out the entire sentence what is the algorithm behind this okay then if you look at closely here with the sentence formation point of view you can start with the, the second character like this i as a teacher writing on the board i am like that so most of the thing i as i am i and like that the try trying to find out what could be this the second character then definitely we can able to understand that the sentences many we are having now once we start with i definitely the most probability one which is m then we write here m yeah well friends from this uh, then we went to find out what is the relation between these two characters then we do understand that uh, a to d it is a third character like this a b c d the third character here from this m m to p then we are having again m and o p so that means this particular plain test which has been converted into cipher test in the form of three characters away then if you switch back here then you can able to find out that it is a i am a boy boy so you can see about the relation with the third character so this type of breaking the cipher we are calling analyzing on the test so the overall idea from this what we understand is the cryptology in the cryptology then whenever you see about the study of different different fields the art of developing is a cryptography and breaking that this type of thing what i have given is a cryptanalysis so lot of work is going on this script analysis part you develop the algorithm it is broken again you modify the algorithm and again it is broken like that this process is there in this world of our security yeah which is a simple example for this plain test how cipher test has become only to understand the terminology the role of cryptography and script analysis we understood now so to increase the complexity of this breaking then we are going for the seizure cipher
and here another part what we are calling is a trap position so to increase the complexity here you can see now we are shuffling the data with the help of a key here with the help of a key then the key are sorted here then we are putting it the alphabetical order and lexically order point of view you see first a will come then this particular part we are mixing up this we are mixing up writing this so certain plain text has been shuffled like this manner and the key will be kept totally confidential now trust me our undergraduate students if by giving this particular cipher test and uh, without disclosing what is the key and trying to find out what is the plain test and they could be able to break this by taking uh, just uh, 15 minutes to start with if you go on uh, make them train then uh, within minutes people are trying to break this so from this what do we understand the size of the key we need to increase so for that uh, the very first uh, conventional algorithm what we are using is a data encryption standard and this was the very conventionally very first algorithm which was developed during the uh, 70s ta stands for data encryption standard and it was uh, developed uh, at uh, this particular uh, based on the lucifer cipher and in between there was a lot of uh, controversial things have happened and uh, now it is a uh, freely available and uh, the key size is a uh, 56 bit now let us see now to start with uh, so we do understand that uh, a block of a 64 bit is going to become uh, another block of 64 bit with the help of a uh, 56 bit here if you see this algorithm next couple of minutes quickly i uh, make you to feel that a uh, lot of complexity is involved in this right so you can see now it has got 16 rounds all this uh, some sort of information like part 56 bit key will become now part 8 bit and in that again we have to make it to two parts so lot of suffering will take place this let us quickly look at now by having this so here uh, you can see now uh, it has got a lot of bigger diagram total 6 19 stages are there from here to here 19 stages are there and in all the 19 stages a uh, lot of shuffling will take place okay so first we are having first box is initial permutation and in each round uh, we are having now lot of uh, simply taking this uh, particular function and uh, or that 64 bit of uh, plain text has become 32 bit and 32 bit and this 32 bit of right part is coming as it is to left side and uh, uh, left part we are having a lot of uh, function of uh, right part and key part So right part is a 32 bit, key part is a 48 bit. With that, how from this uh, you are getting that uh, uh, the exclusion or operation here? This is the important part. With this 48 bit, how is it carrying out? That we are going to see in this. So it means a uh, lot of nomenclature is there in this particular one. By noticing here, uh, what we can see here is a uh, lot of uh, uh, how all those six bits are shuffled. Uh, this type of discussion we are having this. So you can see now. See how many diagrams are simply. Uh, speaking about how that how much uh, description has been taken place here. This is all about the uh, uh, what we call it the data encryption standard. So quickly, deliberately, I am uh, uh, giving that overall showing you your ninety stages algorithm. But my dear uh, listeners, you and try to follow this. Even though it has become that much uh, uh, in depth of our discussion, the overall the whole beauty is now on this particular uh, operator that we are calling it the exclusive or operator XR operator. the whole beauty is on this xr operator how this particular uh, idea is originated whatever activity you are doing in the first round let like that you are repeating for 16 round by changing the key so for that you try to understand that this we are calling is the idea has come from fistel proof i try to convince this uh, with respect to three rounds how it can be taken out for the fun how the people are getting the ideas that we have to appreciate here so now think about now you are having certain important message here that you have put into the envelope right so for putting that into your envelope let us say you have taken a, a key called k1 yeah so to make much more complicated this whole part again i put into another envelope but this time i have taken now k2 like that if i continue because i told now it is a three rounds so third round also i have put then another key i have taken that is a k3 what i am trying to convince here is uh, the original data encryption algorithm which is of total 19 stages the style of encryption even though shuffling has taken that much uh, so many steps uh, the theme behind that is only this concept only this concept what we call it a uh, fistel proof now my dear uh, listeners if at all you want to go to the interior one then which one one is which one of is required to be opened k3 is required to be opened so with the k3 i have opened it then later again i have opened the k2 then finally i have opened the k1 yeah so from this overall idea i think everybody has understood now 
So it means encryption time we have done now by first encrypting with K1, later on K2, then K3. This sequence we have taken now. This we call it the encryption process. Now, at the time of decryption, what we need to do? Definitely the reverse. That is a K3 and K2 and K1. So this part, what we are calling here, the plain test is first encrypted with the K1, again re-encrypted with the K2, again re-encrypted with the K3. K3, encrypted with the K3. Yeah, from this you notice that if I want to go to this particular one, what I need to do, definitely I have to decrypt with the K3. Then this will be cancelled. Again, this will be cancelled and this will be cancelled. Then we will get back the plain test. That means we are writing only one algorithm in this particular data encryption standard. Only one algorithm. And that same algorithm by changing the keys K1 to K3 for the encryption and the reverse way K3 to K1, if you apply, then the algorithm purpose is fulfilled. Then people have started how this uh, reversing will take place. If I take now plain test which is encrypted with K1, if I say it is a decrypted with the K1 and it has to be cancelled. Cancelled. Then which operator is really helping us to do this for that? Then the important operator just now I have told you that is nothing but exclusive R operator. To achieve this one, then people have taken this, uh, the property of XR operator. Like suppose say you are having A is XR with the X. If you re-XR with X, then my dear, then you can understand that you will be getting that A. So that means whatever you are calling it is a plain test. If, if you want to say that it is encrypted with K1, the simple idea is encrypted with the K1. Then if we are calling it some sort of a encryption is happened. Then to take it to your plain test back, then again the same key you have to use, then only you are going to get the plain test. So this part is uh, repeated for 16 rounds. In this diagram, I am showing now something like a three things. Now you see now. So if I take now, right part is coming as it is, and left part is uh, exclusion with the K1. Then it has become now L prime. So what is your L prime? L is XR with the K1. Now if I want to get this particular L back, then what I need to do, definitely I need to re-XR with the K1 only. K1 only. So before we do this, if I do this part with the K2, this is what we are calling it, the suffling, suffling, suffling here. Right? Then we are getting back here. The other side, so the whole focus of this encryption, what you have to understand is, at the time of sending K1 and K2, K3 to do, which we are calling it the encryption process, at the time of decryption, same algorithm, but remember, you need to go for the reversing of K3, K2, K1, then you will get back this. So if you call this a plain test here, then we are getting here same, same plain test back. So this idea has come in by the official proof, the entire data encryption algorithm uh, is based on this type of XUO R operator. So that way, here in our uh, world of uh, cryptography, the algorithm which I have discussed is the data encryption algorithm, which key size is a 56 bit. The bigger the key size, it is very difficult to break. But at the same time, we need to remember that uh, it is very, it will become much more slow. As and today, we are having now regional algorithm, which is very prevalent method outside. This particular one, we are calling it the advanced encryption standard. And these two people, Richman and Damon, has developed uh, and with their names, it will be, the logic is very interesting logic. Uh, like just now in data institution standard, the feature proof which I have explained, like that uh, here, these two people have come out with the 128 bit key and at present the world, it is the best choice. So all these algorithms are the same key cryptography algorithms. Yeah, so symmetry key cryptography algorithm, what is the whole issue here is, uh, uh, issue is a, uh, is a key distribution part, right? Whatever key I do have, the receiver is also supposed to have the same key. But what is the bigger advantage? It is much more fast. Like you remember, between two people when they wanted to communicate each other, first we have to have authentication, then key distribution, then we are going for confidentiality and then digital signature. So how do you distribute the key? First we have to authenticate. Then how do you authenticate this? Then we do realize that when I wanted to hand out the key to the same person, how sender will recognize the other side is the same person? This uh, symmetric algorithm is uh, not useful for that. So that is the reason. At the time of encrypting and decrypting, which we are calling confidentiality, for fast thing, we are preferring to use the symmetric algorithm. So at this place, to achieve our digital signatures and authentication, then we are switching over to asymmetric algorithm. Because the bigger disadvantage is here, key distribution is a major issue. Yeah. So that's the reason we are calling here public key algorithms have come into the picture. In this public key algorithm, it is not safe key algorithm, two keys are taken. That's why we call it asymmetric key cryptography. 
two keys are involved here. Yeah. So now each and every person has to generate two keys, right? So here a key is there. One is a public key, another is a private key. To differentiate the terminology, I am taking the second character. That is a one is a KU, another one is a KR. So kindly do remember, KU is a public key, KR is a private key. Every individual has to generate now two keys. Yeah. Now you see now, sender name is Alice, receiver name is Bob. As we have seen now, we have generated two keys, public key and private key. Then this we are calling Alice public key, Alice private key. And similarly, Bob is also generated, Bob public key and Bob private key. Now, now Alice wanted to communicate with Bob main, then Alice has to use Bob's public key. And the name says here, all public keys are there in the public domain. And here the concept of certificate will come into the picture. In the real world, we are having a IPRA, Internet Policy Registration Authority, which is taking care of uh, this type of uh, certificate. Certificate is nothing but public key and private key concept. Yeah. How this algorithm will work out? What that you see now? So in this, uh, we need to understand that the plain test is encrypted with a public key mean, then it has to be decrypted with the private key. This is the primary part. I encrypted with the public key. If I say Alice, then it has to be decrypted with the private key here. And even though public key and private key are different, both are originated by the same fellow, then, then we can say that the cancellation is taking place. And we do understand that by looking at this diagram, one is a private key, another one is a public key. Since two keys are involved, then we are calling this type of algorithms we are calling asymmetric key algorithm. Fine. So that's why we do realize that here. By looking at a public key, one cannot suppose to find out the private key. Then by looking at public key, one should not apply the chosen plain test attack. These are the primary requirements which we are going to say that uh, then only we can meet our public key cryptography concept. Otherwise, uh, by looking at public key, if you find out what is a private key, there is no meaning of a discussion on this. And tomorrow over the air, cypher test is going. And the, how this cypher test, the cypher test is generated for this particular plain test which is encrypted with uh, some Alice public key, let us say now. Then you are trying to find out what could the plain test by applying different, different uh, chosen plain test attack. You first try with the P prime, you get here C prime. Is it matching? No. Another message you take, then is it matching? No. Like that, uh, this type of thing one should not apply by using brute force attack. So that way we do notice that here with these three parameters, the algorithm has arrived. Uh, that algorithm, what we call it here. Public key cryptography, the popular algorithm is a RSA algorithm. Rivest Shamir, Adlement, these three people have developed this. In this, uh, the whole concept is uh, how do you generate the public key and how do you generate the private key. And public key generation is very simple. Right? It is taking now a particular message, is encrypted with a public key mean. What does this public key consisting of? We are having here something called E and N. So it is nothing but some number generation of E and N. Suppose say this we are calling it a cipher test. You need to decrypt. Now in this asymmetric key algorithm, then we understand that second key is a private key. You have to use it. Then for that cipher test, if you decrypt, then you will be getting the message. So by looking these two parameters, then we understand that private key is nothing but two parameters D and N. So what this Rivest Shamir element has done here is how do you generate the E D N? So these three parameters, if you generate algorithm, if we speak then we can say that the uh, public key and private key concept will be used here. So that way we do realize that here. Now that generation algorithm will take care of uh, to transmit the message. So using this public key cryptography, how do you send a secret message to the receiver? Yeah. So listen now. So these two people must have developed the algorithms. So now see this arrow mark here. Who is speaking with whom? Alice wanted to speak with Bob. By that time, Bob must have generated two keys. One we are calling a Bob's public key, another one is a Bob's private key. Private key. As the name says here, public key should be there available in the public domain. Think about it, there is a public domain here. Yeah, so this particular one is placed here. Is placed here. Now, Alice wanted to send a message to Bob. Then what she does now, because it is reachable now, then the particular message is encrypted with the Bob's public key. Then what will be transmitted now is in the form of cypher test. Already I have told what is the terminology I am taking now. Discussion. 
then this particular cyclic test has uh, come here. And this is like what we are calling it a envelope. This envelope can be opened only by the original box. Why? Because uh, it will be decrypted by his, his own private key. This private key will not be shared to anyone. That is the reason, the reason what we call it here. It is a totally private to him. It is a totally secret to him. He will not share to anybody. Including his life partner, he will not share this particular private key. So it means your cipher test is required to be decrypted with the, his own private key. Nobody in the world can be able to decrypt this. Only a person who is having this private key. Now, if you look at mathematically here, what is your C? C is nothing but message plain test, which was encrypted with the public key of the box. Yeah, now you can notice here, both keys are originated by the same person. That's why this public key and private key get cancelled and only Bob in the real world can able to understand the message. And one important point what you have to understand here is here, once you encrypt this, you also you cannot able to take out this message back. So that means for decryption purpose, can the Alice can able to open this? Uh, no. So opening can be made only by the Bob. So if I use the word here in terms of that, sender uh, wanted to encrypt the sender will be encrypting the message to the receiver by using receiver's public key that we have used it at yeah? this direction. Bob's public key is used here. That's what I have told here. That is the public domain part. In the notation point of view, how the decryption is done, that I have shown here in this diagram. Well, so using this public key cryptography, all part here is how we generate these here keys here. Strictly speaking, three E, N, and D. So it is basically depends on the large prime numbers, which are greater than 10 to the power 100. And from that, you calculate the N value. And from that, you this is totally mathematical part will come into the picture. You select some G and which is related to the prime number 2, D. What is your G? G is nothing but P minus 1 and Q minus 1. Now, if you look at these areas, then we are having here uh, N is available and D is available. E also multiplicative inverse of this. You look at now. So, how the public and private key getting cancelled? Because of it has got multiplicative inverse. That means plain test which you encrypt and decrypt. Then because of this particular relationship, if you say public key and if you say private key, a cancellation is possible because the beauty here is just by using the model of arithmetic, they have calculated here. So, what is the takeaway from this is here? In symmetric cryptography, the important role is taken by taken care by XR operator. And whereas in public key cryptography, the whole beauty is lying in the mod operator. That part you need to remember it. So, one sample I have shown here. Suppose if you want to transmit some particular character, like according to alphabetical, a is equal to 1, B is equal to 2, like that, uh, yes will become now 19. And that 19 character is encrypted according to the algorithm, it has become now 28. So over the 8, 28 will be transmitted in the form of cipher test. Then upon receiving this, and this gentleman is getting back his uh, 19. So this is an example of RS algorithm, how character by character it is taking place here. So with this, now we do understand that what is the symmetric key and what is the asymmetric key here. Yeah. Now, Another third point, another important part here is we need to understand here uh, how do you achieve the message integrity. For that, we need to understand digital signature. So, what is a basically signature? So, for that, uh, we are having now these three requirements. The receiver uh, can be claimed with the claimed identity via the sender, and uh, the sender cannot later uh, deny the content of the message. And the receiver should not uh, pass off the message himself upon receiving the message. These are the three primary requirements here. Yeah. So the important point you need to understand here is here, in that we are using something called digest algorithm. If you take the entire message, if we encrypt, suppose a message is much more bigger, for encryption itself it will take much more time. So that is the reason the entire message has to undergo some concept, what we call it here, digestion part it has to take it. That we are calling the uh, uh, some sort of algorithms like a uh, message digest version 5 secure hash algorithm like that we are having this so based on the bigger message one small entity one number has to be generated here that we call it a hash function h also we can call or we can call it a md of p here and why the word digestion has come into the picture because uh, from the digested element you cannot get back so mathematically we are calling these type of things as a injective under we call it it is not bijective. So from the message, you can 
easily easily generate the one hash number right so there are different different uh, message digest algorithms are there yeah so that part make us to say that is the first point and second point you do understand that from the digested element it is almost impossible to get back the plain test if you look at now some uh, algorithm like md5 right message digest algorithm message digest 5 md5 algorithm however bigger is the message it will be undergoing good number of stages and finally it will be generating a when it generating one unique number that we call it the hash value right that is a 128 bit so on a block size of different different block it has undergone lot of stages one unique number is generated and what is the meaning of the second one from this unique number can you able to get back the original message no so that is the important point here right yeah so if there is a small change in the message different number will be generated so from these three requirements what we understood now is the whole beauty is uh, how complicated this message digest algorithm there is nothing but simply one bigger hash function yeah so a small change of single bit will also generate a different number so this is the important one okay yeah so for that uh, let us see now how the things will be happening here look at this so i am having a plain test then i am taking that plain test and uh, append it with uh, some particular uh, the hash function then the whole part is a uh, digitally signed then we are using this part is a what we call is a sender's private key yeah so now i tell now clearly here if i use the terminology like a uh, plain test is there that particular plain test uh, is this part it is a plain test and one copy of the plain test we have undergone with the digested algorithm then it is a digested algorithm these two has to go together and this cannot be tampered by anybody that's why the whole part is encrypted by sender's private key that is a alice private key that part you have to understand that we are calling here decryption generally we use the word decryption because private key is used that's why we have the notation is followed here now look at this overall idea here i already told you md5 is a 128 bit output like here we have taken the algorithm what we call is a secure hash algorithm right there is a 160 bit part here your message is going via digital algorithm which are generate a hash value of unique number 160 bit and this particular this particular one using our rs algorithm cryptographically protected by using because the sender name is alice then we are using the alice private key used to protect it then it has become a totally signed hash right and these two together we are handling here so it means if i call this a message and if i call it a digested element and this particular digested element when it will become a signature provided sender's uh, private key use a k r private key use then it will become a signature these two together we are putting into a envelope and then sending to the receiver so this is what happening in the real world yeah so this part with another diagram i am showing now how the signature part it is taking place right so now let us look at the notation here sender is taking the message one one copy of the message is going here here and we need to have it signed in digest so that means one another copy is here by applying the hash function could be md5 could be secure hash algorithm one secure hash algorithm like the different different versions are there then we are taking now the message digest so according to the previous notation this part i called it a p because the hash function is applied then this part we are calling it a md of p it is a unique number and this unique number is cryptographically protected for that what happened now we need to encrypt with the sender's private key sender's private key so sender's private key will be here. and these two will be going to the other place by concatenating then this is a concatenated symbol these two will be added and going to the receiver here. yeah upon getting the receiver how you be understanding that uh, 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 that uh, there is no tampering made here so for that uh, here you see now what is the receiver say so receiver has received now a uh, message message part and then signed part then message part is taken now suppose if it is altered right then then with that altered message again he will be now applying the hash function and he generating the message digest and then he will be whatever uh, altered message of this uh, md5 he is getting the hash value and this is signed part kindly remember this whenever you say signed part then we do understand that it is cryptographically protected with the sender's private key and that internally we are having this uh, our digested element then 
decryption purpose what you are using now so here at the other side receiver will be using receiver is using sender's public key so i am decrypting now i am decrypting now as the name says here public key in the public domain then sender's the public key is there now you see now both keys are originated at the same place the cancellation is taking place and this is the hash number digested number which was originated with the original message and this both messages are required to be same if there is a change in this then you can certify that it is a some sort of a message integrity is lost tampering is made like that we are having it so from this uh, what we understand here is uh, in the entire scenario what we do realize that we are having now asymmetric key cryptography is taking very important role for doing the authentication and also for the signature point of view for the application point of view in the email uh, we can see now pretty good privacy is there and now another is a privacy enhanced mind another one is privacy enhanced mind which we are calling it a secure mind multi purpose internet uh, mail extension part is there okay right? so overall what we understand is uh, this part here symmetric part which we have discussed as a data encryption standard we do understand that it is very fast but key distribution is a very bigger issue here now we do understand here asymmetric key advantage is uh, no one can able to break this but disadvantage is uh, bigger bigger keys are there that's why it has become now dead slow when you say it, it has become dead slow we would like to use only for authentication purpose and digital signatures purpose right and advantage here it is more secure now with the combination of these two if you want to transmit a mail to someone then what are the things we have to do four steps number one authentication only one time you need to do then you apply the asymmetric algorithm then lengthy lengthy messages so fastly you are going to encrypt then you have to have symmetric algorithm but remember to do the symmetric algorithm key distribution has to be taken place how do you distribute the key again you take about the our asymmetric algorithm okay friends so that means key distribution will also be done by asymmetric algorithm then these two upon doing this then lengthy lengthy messages will be done with the same key cryptography algorithm this part will come into the same key cryptography part that is encryption and decryption so fastly we will be doing now in the end only one time you are going to do the digital signature that part we are going to take here so these four sequences point of view we do understand symmetric key purpose we are using the encryption and decryption symmetric key we are doing remaining authentication key distribution digital signature only in the beginning we have to do in the end we have to do only one time you have to do that's why even though bigger bigger numbers are used only one time you have to do the for that purpose we are having asymmetric cryptography but more and above that in the communication we understand that we need to have limited number of bits so when your bits are happen to be much more bigger then you have to apply the compression part when you use the word compression simply call it we call it a zipping so one side you want to encrypt other side you want to zip which one you have to do first then another issue will come into the picture what that i have given one simple uh, scenario right should i do first zipping part or should i do now encryption part first for that uh, simply i have taken some numerical part case number 1 encryption then 1000 uh, bits have become now encrypted into a 1000 bits then i have applied the some dev lempel zip algorithm then it has become now compression algorithm it has become now 100 part then again you see now case number 2 so in the case number 2 what happened first i have done zipping part then i have encrypted this if you look at this so which one is better then you do understand that uh, encryption point of view uh, zipping part of you see my dear so 1000 bits have become now 100 here also 1000 bits have become 100 so there is no any much difference here same meaning input is 1000 output is 100 input is 1000 output is 100 whereas if you look at this part here you need to encrypt uh, Thousand bits. So from this, what do you understand now? Here you need to enter only hundred bits. So that is the reason. In the real world, always first we compress, and then we go for the encryption. That you need to compress. Remember this. Okay. From this, you understand. In our PGP, we are going to have here the uh, RSA algorithm for authentication and key distribution purpose. Again, authentication confidentiality is a simple key cryptography. I have discussed about the data encryption algorithm. Like that, we are having a. Uh, idea another algorithm and uh, digital signature point of view rsa and md5 will be there in the real world all these things will be taken into the picture pgp is our uh, email uh, security point of view the block diagram look like this and in this uh, if you change this uh, to pgm then only the algorithm names will be changed this will be replaced by ds 
this will be replaced by secure hash algorithm that we are calling it as PEM. But remember, the sequence will be followed like this. Yeah, this part uh, we are having this. We are going to secure my notice here. We are having secure DS and then SHA. So the red color part only our symmetric key cryptography. Lengthy, lengthy messages can be done so fastly here. This is here. This is a total uh, block diagram flow. Then you can see now your plain test. One copy is going here as it is. Let, let me put this copy here like this. And another copy is uh, digested and protected. And then these two will be transmitted here. And this we are calling P1. So what is your P1? Your plain test along with the signature. That particular one is a crypto uh, compressed with the Lempel G algorithm. Then we are getting here P1Z. Then only the original uh, receiver only has to receive. That's why this whole part will be cryptographically encrypted with the session key. And the session key distribution will be done again with the RS algorithm. And uh, as all of us know, simple mail transfer protocol support only ASCII characters. Then that is the reason we are using now converting uh, this uh, digested uh, compressed, encrypted, all this uh, garbled data we wanted to have in the form of ASCII. Then we are using here in the printable characters of base 64 algorithm. This is what happening now in this. The overall what we need to understand here is here, the takeaways are when you say about encryption, when you say about decryption, when to use symmetric key, when to use asymmetric key purpose, uh, the whole beauty is uh, now fast purpose symmetric key algorithm. You see now, fast purpose symmetric key algorithm. Only one time you read the algorithm, only keys will be changed in the DS. That's what I have written now, right? Only the keying sequence will be taken here. Only one time you read algorithm, encryption means this sequence and decryption means the reverse sequence. That is all about our encryption algorithm. Same key cryptography. Write algorithm once and ensure that the other receiver will be having the same key and he has to simply change the keys. Remember that K1, K2, K3 we have taken, the other side K3, K2, K1. That part you have to remember. Yeah, that is a official proof. And public key cryptography, you need to understand the same thing can be used for confidentiality purpose, same thing can be used for digital signature purpose. Confidentiality means secret message. Then you need to understand that sender is sending a message to the receiver, means receiver has to, receiver has to, sender has to use receiver's public key. That part you have to remember it. Sender has to use receiver's public key. Then we will call it a confidentiality actually. But remember, when you say about the uh, uh, what we call it is a digital signature, kindly message. Sender has to use his own private key. That's what you have to remember it. Sender has to use his own private key. His own private key. So if you use the sender has used his own, sorry, not for this, this one. Sender has to use his own private key, weak. His own private key, then it will become signed. So that way, now the signature pointer we also know here, the sender, again it is a repetition part. If I want to have a sign mean, remember this. Sender name is Alex using the private key. And public is available freely, you will be doing it. So overall with this overview, what are the things we do understand? My dear uh, audience, we are having now authentication purpose, the uh, asymmetric key algorithm you are using. Key distribution purpose also we are using. Asymmetric key algorithm. From this we do understand that there is a session key and this is a session key. Both are having the same key. How these keys are distributed with the help of our public key cryptography. Authentication is also done with public key cryptography. Key distribution will also with the public key cryptography. Now, for so fastly you have to encrypt and decrypt with this session key. That is it, same key cryptography. Same key cryptography, symmetric key cryptography. In the end, we are using the integrity of the message purpose. Again, we are using the public key cryptography. So this is the overall idea of our discussion. Yeah, I'm done. Thank you so Any much, Any questions, sir. please? Thank you so much, sir. Uh, Thank you. Really appreciate uh, uh, all this content. Uh, we can uh, move on to the questions. We have three of them. Uh, I think uh, we can uh, spend uh, five to ten minutes uh, addressing them. Sure. Uh, can you can you see the chat, sir? Uh, or would you like me to read out the questions? Yeah, I open the chat. Uh, you shared the entire screen. Uh, I um, I see three questions in the chat, starting with uh, Bikash Saha.
think adam you can just read the question to suresh sir i think it will be easier that way yes uh, sounds good uh, so our first question is from bikash um his question would be in symmetric algo uh, how are the keys transferred to the receiver Can you hear us, sir? Oh, uh, sir, I'm afraid you're muted. Sir, we can't hear you. Can you try uh, switching off and on your microphone? Uh, I see that it's uh, turned on. Is there an issue, Adam? Uh, it seems like that. Uh, Dr. Suresh's uh, microphone is indicated as uh, switched on, but on the screen, uh, he still appears to be muted. Uh, oh. I, I, uh, I think there might be some technical difficulty. You can just give him the access. I think he's going from a new device. Yeah, am I audible, please? Yes, sir. Perfectly. Perfectly. Well, yeah. Yeah, the question now. Uh, understood it. I mean, there's some echoing coming. Let me check. What do you want to do? Uh, we can hear you now, sir. Dr. Suresh, are you with us? Adam, did, did, does Dr. Suresh have access to speak? Uh, one second, let me see. Dr. Suresh, uh, can you unmute yourself now? It uh, should work fine now. Are you with us, sir? I 
think he's not he just dropped i think if he's rejoining mm-hmm. we'll wait for a minute or two and if if still the issue is persisting uh, we can take the we can take the queue queue and then we'll have dr suresh respond to them over my email or something like that yeah my audible please yes sir perfectly yeah yeah, yeah sorry there was some please uh, in the issue network then the question uh, i do remember and uh, one of the i have shared the screen i believe my screen is visible uh your screen uh, isn't visible right now i think uh, we do have time uh, to address uh, two of the questions the first one would be in a symmetric algo how does the how are the keys transferred to the receiver yeah yeah i think now the screen is visible yes sir perfectly yeah now here so while writing on the screen i am explaining now the whole key distribution concept is done by a scenario called the ipra internet policy registration authority this ipra will be having some distribution of the pca this we are calling policy certification authority then here we are having something called a ca ca certificate authority all these things are ca let us continue now think about a scenario so what is the ca ca is a certificate authority authority so this a person has to go to nearby certificate authority and get a certificate what does the certificate consisting of is nothing but public key and private key these two keys will be there now key distribution has to be done suppose i have taken a session key kas is a session key this i am calling it a session key the question is asked with respect to this session key and this session key i wanted to hand over to a person x then the person x certificates are available here so let me call this here person x and that person x definitely have, must have shared his public key here that means using my uh, using his public key i will be sending the my session key so session key is now cryptographically protected with the receiver's public key public key and this particular one upon receiving by the person then he will be decrypting with the his private key like this that means to exchange the key distribution we are taking the help of our asymmetric cryptography that we are calling it a public key cryptography and that public key cryptography what does it consisting of two keys public key and private key and that public key comes for private key pair with some additional uh, information that we call it a certificate so you need to have a certificate and then with the help of this registration with the ipra the receiver's uh, public key you will be using to distribute the key i hope i have answered the question any other question please thank you so much sir uh, we have uh, so many questions i believe we still have time for uh, one of them for um uh, padma shri uh, his question is when the key size becomes bigger with the algorithm not become computing intensive and key distribution becomes a challenge yeah it is true uh, her observation is really acceptable but here uh, that is the reason uh, only one time you are going to do the key distribution so let me start discussing about your public key uh, data encryption standards it is a 56 bit key and you are having aes algorithm at present you know certainly acceptable one 128 bit key now already we have seen from the sequence of the discussion the bigger the key size the more difficult to break it but how do you distribute this the distribution has become now very challenging one for, for that purpose just now what i have called uh, by using this one as a session key and the session key to distribute only one time in the beginning you distribute so you will be using definitely asymmetric cryptography asymmetric cryptography only in the beginning between the sender and receiver you are going to use it so authentication only one time key distribution only one time so here we are using the rsa algorithm in the world 
then we are having the same key cryptography same key cryptography that our as algorithm we are using it in the end digital signature point of view again we are using the rs algorithm so the observation of rs algorithm we notice that it is much more slow but we are doing this authentication and key distribution and digital signature only one time either in the beginning or in the end and rest of the time upon having the keys uh, then key distribution will be done uh, once keys are there with the sender and receiver so fastly we are going to do with the key distribution and hope i have answered the question yeah in other question please uh thank you so much sir uh I believe we ran out of time uh, for questions, but uh, thank you so much for your expert lecture, sir. Uh, I learned a great deal today and uh, we really appreciate uh, you taking your time uh, to uh, contribute to the Indo-Dutch Cyber Security School. Um, we received uh, more than 10 other questions. Uh, is it OK if I forward them uh, to you via email? Yeah. So uh, I have displayed my email and you feel free to forward this and thank you for uh, giving me an opportunity to share uh, all the features of uh, uh, this authentication, digital signature and uh, in fact uh, in a limited time covering all these features in, in the form of overview is difficult. I hope uh, I have justified by giving certain... Thank you points. very much sir. Thank, thank you. Sir.